Je donne maintenant la I now give the floor to Her Excellency Edita Ramos da Costa Tanjua, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Cooperation and Communities of Sao Tome and Principe. Your Excellency, Mr. President of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly, Your Excellency, Mr. Secretary General of the United Nations, Your Excellency's heads of state and government, ministers of foreign affairs, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. At this historic time marked by numerous challenges, it is with great honor that I address this assembly for the first time as Minister of Foreign Affairs, Cooperation and Communities of Saint Tomé and Principi. The 76th session of the general debate offers me the opportunity to congratulate, on behalf of my country, Saint Tomé and Principi, Mr. Abdullah Shahid, for his, for his election as president of this session. Please count on our support during your term, which we hope will enable our organization to move forward to resolve the most burning issues that continue to impact our peoples and our planet. We also congratulate the outgoing president, Mr. Volkan Boskir, for his commitment in conducting the work of the previous session, particularly in the context of the scares caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. We are particularly pleased to pay tribute to Mr. Antonio Guterres for his re-election as Secretary General of the United Nations, which Saint Tomé and Principi fully supported and for his tireless efforts toward strengthening the role of the United Nations in promoting peace, democracy, and the protection of human life on a global scale and in combating poverty in all its forms. Mr. President, heads of state and government, as we face multiple emergencies, we welcome with great expectations the theme chosen for this session, building resilience through hope to, dis to recover from COVID-19, rebuild sustainability, respond to the needs of the planet, respect the rights of people, and revitalize the United Nations. Indeed, as the COVID-19 pandemic has shown, an effective multilateral system and solidarity among countries are essential for the resolution of the enormous and difficult problems that continue to confront humanity. Indeed, our generation cannot shirk nor delay our responsibility for providing global answers that demand, frankly speaking, the adoption of mainstreamed and collective commitments. The United Nations represent hope for millions of people whose gaze turn to us at this time with the belief that we are on the verge of something new and better for the world. The duty is upon us to develop the skills to articulate the solutions that are expected of us which may bring light to so many human beings whose livelihoods amount to a path of suffering and uncertainty. Your Excellencies, Saint Tomé and Principi, which is located in the Gulf of Guinea, has a privileged position in international geopolitics and offers multiple geographical potentials. Notwithstanding these advantages, our country is in a situation of economic and financial emergency while undergoing a complex process of transition to medium income status, according to accepted international standards. In light of these complex facts, 
combined with the new paradigm of international relations resulting from COVID-19, which continues to ravage humanity, we understand that the economic situation in the most vulnerable countries in Africa and in São Tomé and Príncipe in particular will be overcome only if multilateralism and cooperation are enhanced among all countries, from the most fortunate to the least developed. As part of its role of generating hope for the world, we wish to congratulate the United Nations for the decision on December 23rd to hold a high-level meeting on food systems. São Tomé and Príncipe made some progress in the area of food systems, but a significant part of the population remains unable to have a satisfactory daily diet. However, we are pleased to acknowledge the support from various development partners, particularly the FAO, in coordination with the government of São Tomé and Príncipe, the FAO has worked to increase the tradition, nutritional level of our most vulnerable populations. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, poverty is the greatest scourge to humanity. It is not by chance that poverty is foremost among the sustainable development goals. We have recently seen unimaginable progress in the most diverse areas which should anchor a real improvement in the quality of life for all. But the harsh reality is very different. The eradication of poverty in all its forms and dimensions has to be the topmost priority of political commitment in the family of nations, namely the United Nations. It is known that poverty is a direct cause of tragic consequences, such as hunger, soil degradation, and the uncontrolled exploitation of natural resources. It is also the cause of armed conflicts, population displacements, saturation of many urban centers, and migration flows from the south to the north. With respect to migration flows, particularly from the south to the north, we see a status quo which to us is unjustifiable. Therefore, we understand that we must combine the efforts among destination countries with coordinated policies to welcome refugees as well as provide adequate support for migrants' countries of origin in order to bring the situation under control or at least mitigate its impacts and to promote the dignity of persons who are under these circumstances. We are convinced that it is in the general interest to have peaceful, equitable, and sustainable societies. Indeed, the session of the United Nations General Assembly at this particular time seems to us to be an opportune moment for the international community gathered here to reaffirm our commitment to the just aspirations of humanity and the goals of the United Nations. We also bring to this session our wish that our organization create more binding mechanisms to ensure solidarity toward the victims of war and terrorism on the one hand and demonstrate the political skills to develop permanent solutions for conflicts both old and new, namely the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the conflict in Syria, the conflict in Libya, the establishment of terrorist groups in the Sahel, and the actions of the El Shabaab terrorist group in East Africa and Boko Haram in Central and West Africa. The persistent political and military instability in many African countries calls on us and depend from all of us that we undertake combined efforts to silence the guns so that a solution negotiated through permanent dialogue may be reached in order to put a permanent end to the suffering of all peoples involved. With respect to the situation in the Sahara, we welcome the United Nations appointment 
of the special representative to help the parties to reach a political solution for their regional disagreements on the basis of UN and African Union resolutions. We therefore call on the parties to commit to this political process to its conclusion. Mr. President, Heads of State and Government, in addition to the consequences of violent extremism, the world faces other challenges resulting from the devastating effects of climate change, which create serious obstacles to the achievement of the SDGs, to which we all committed in 2015 in this very room. Therefore, we congratulate the United Nations for its leadership role in combating climate change and appeal to all for greater commitment to this common cause, which, like the COVID-19 pandemic, causes concerns among all countries. Natural catastrophes occurred with increasing frequency, scale, and intensity, leading to loss of lives, particularly in the least developed regions of our planet. There is no doubt that the global effort must continue under the auspices of the United Nations Framework Agreement on Climate Change. Indeed, this must be a shared responsibility among all of us, as it is incumbent on us to safeguard our greatest gift, which is life, both ours and that of future generations. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, Heads of State and Government, Your Excellencies, we deeply believe in our organization as a gathering place for our causes. Its role is to anchor the structuring and systematizing responses to our common challenges and to lead the harmonization of our world with respect to cultural differences, differences, models and systems of government, as well as economic choices. As part of this function, it is fully able to create the foundations for cooperation and exchanges to generate wealth, prosperity, and lasting peace for all. Sustainable development has come to occupy a prominent place in the debates during recent sessions of the General Assembly, clearly demonstrating our spirit, our spirit of inclusion. However, for the spirit of inclusion to become a palpable reality, we need the widely discussed reform of the organization to become a reality, with the inclusion of Africa in the Security Council. Thus, we will ensure that the continent has an opportunity to be considered in global decision-making. The Democratic Republic of São Tomé and Príncipe, a small island developing state with all the constraints that this condition entails, pursues a policy that is adapted to our reality, respecting multicultural diversity, the dignity of peoples, and human rights. With an economy that is very vulnerable to external shocks, São Tomé and Príncipe has faced enormous challenges in achieving the SDGs. However, our country has made efforts to achieve these goals. However, we must acknowledge that for this wish to become a reality, the commitment of the international community, as announced in some international forums, becomes indispensable. In fact, we can hardly talk about lasting democratic progress without sustained economic growth. We must remember that in December 2024, Santome and Principi will graduate to medium income country status. This achievement is an act of recognition of our efforts and progress, but opens the door to enormous challenges. Therefore, from this high podium, we issue a passionate appeal to the international community to not only accompany us in this arduous transition from least developed country 
to middle income country but also to provide us with the necessary support for the full achievement of the sustainable development goals mr president heads of state and government ladies and gentlemen Access to credit for development continues to be an essential response to reopening the global economy as it will mitigate the risks of illegal financial flows and contribute to good governance. The African continent continues to show gaps in the Human Development Index, however, Africa continues to be a continent of opportunities to attract partners that may leverage our enormous mineral resources, vast arable lands, forests and, forests and rivers for the benefit of our populations, especially a great mass of youth, which is the largest group in our demographic uh, mosaic. Excellencies, I conclude my, reform, my remarks by reaffirming Saint Tomé and Principe's unequivocal commitment to contribute as part of the international community as we are able to strengthening the multilateral system and building a better world for all. May God bless us all. Thank you very much for your attention. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs, Cooperation and Communities of Sao Tome and Principe for her statement.